Welcome back to Modern Homestead Alaska. Today we are going to be foraging for our Thanksgiving dinner, or at least in part. Won't you join me today? We are, let me turn you around this close to the house, and we have already found some free food, so join me. Welcome to our vlog. We are the Milnes family. We started building a modern homestead outside of Wasilla, Alaska in the summer of 2021. That's my husband, Aaron. I am Jessica, a stay-at-home wife and mom. Our second son, Caleb, lives here with us along with our daughter, Cody Ann, and the youngest of our family, Wyatt. We brought our two dogs, Tipper and Daisy, and got a new addition, the Alaska dog. Roberto down on it and we are just out here and we are gonna be looking for lobish cranberries what is wild is it took me mm, maybe an hour last year to fill two of these huge 12 cup bowls of lobish cranberries and I'm barely seeing any and that brings a good point that every year is not gonna be a bumper crop for everything. I do have a whole gallon left in the freezer that needs to get processed from last year and we may end up having to use that, but I'd like to make two things from the cranberries. The other thing that we're gonna look around and harvest, I'm not making jam or jelly out of it, is gonna be rose hips. Rose hips are really medicinal and we're gonna harvest some of those. We'll either freeze dry them or just freeze them. And when I make elderberry syrup, I include the rose hips in the elderberry syrup because they strain all the way out and we just add all of that good health benefits for cold and flu season, which is upon us. So let's look for some lobish cranberries. Oh, I just spotted a patch right in front of me. I'll show you what we're doing. So I've shown you before, this is this waxy plant here is the lobish cranberry. And generally you want to wait until after the first frost to harvest or until they're super dark like this. Believe it or not, we have not had our first frost. It is Thursday. Um, however, this weekend we're gonna spend the whole weekend batten down the hatches, if you will, because they are calling for a major cold snow system that will drop us well below the the frost and into the freezing mark um, here coming on Monday. So I need to harvest these now if this is gonna get done this year, and then we need to get everything prepared. So let's start pulling cranberries. In the second part of today's video, we are going to share with you some super exciting news of something that happened on the homestead. So stick around to the end. See this patch here? This is what I was used to picking last year where I could just sit down on the side of the hill and just pull. Cranberries. So I think I've kind of found the spot here. Really near the lake. The cranberries like like dead tree stumps for some Roberto. Oh my gosh. He went swimming. He just came by and totally soaked my leg. Ah puppies! Okay. So I'm gonna pick this hill. So these are rose hips for <laughs> my neighbors. 
And we don't want, obviously, the black ones. We've waited a little bit too long. But these deep maroon purpley ones, that's what we're after. And this plant here is a wild rose bush. And this will bloom the most beautiful, fragrant roses come spring. kitchen and I have the cranberries they have been washed and rinsed and they're ready to go into the jars and we are gonna can up some quick and easy cranberry juice I love to have this during the holidays we like to mix it with maybe some apple cider some things like that throw some cinnamon sticks in you can even put it in like a crock pot on your cabinet it is lovely, some orange slices, anything like that, and have it warm during the holidays. It makes an amazing holiday drink, and we just really, really like cranberry juice. So I'm gonna show you quick and easy how to make cranberry juice, and we're gonna use these free foraged Alaskan cranberries to do so. All right, I'm going to use my pressure canner, and I'll show it to you because I've gotten some questions on this electric pressure canner, what brand it is, and so on. So we have quart size jars. They're sterilized, um, and I just have them on a clean rag here. And then we're going to do one to one and a half cups of these tiny little cranberries per jar. Only four of them fit in the canner, and so we only want to do four at a time. And behind me in the tea kettle, I have some water boiling, and we're going to, after we add the sugar, because I'm gonna do mine sweetened, you certainly do not, because we're putting it, this in the pressure canner, and I believe, don't quote me on it, you would have to check online, USDA, all those different websites that tell you safe canning practices. But cranberries may be tart or have enough acid in them already that you can actually water bath them. You don't have to pressure can them. Okay, to each jar, these beautiful, look at those. To each one of these, I'm gonna do a third of a cup of sugar. If you read recipes online, it'll tell you anywhere from a quarter to a half of a cup. So we just go somewhere in the middle. We're gonna do a third of a cup. Now, we're gonna top each jar off with boiling water, and we want the temperature of the water in the canner to match the jars, and then we're gonna wipe the rings before we seal them. Leaving about one inch, so right here is about the one inch of headspace that I'm going to leave. So for each jar to seal it, I have some, this is white vinegar, and I wipe the jars because I did use um, it, the ankle, the lighting on that. Okay, we'll scrub it up. Anyway, it looks like there's something wrong. So sterile lids, white vinegar. I'm not getting anything off of the rims, but it's still good practice. Okay, into the canner. Okay, so boiling water in the jars, and so we want boiling water in the canner as well. If you look in the back, I don't think you can see it right now. 
but I have to have at least eight cups of water in my canner, which is what this tea kettle holds at least that. Oh, there we go, perfectly. All right, seal that up. We want it on exhaust. We want to plug it in now that it's full. Okay, excuse me. Get back on the counter. So it's on exhaust. We, you can water back on this one, but we're gonna do high. We're gonna do 20 minutes. and push start. It will build pressure, it'll vent automatically for 10 minutes, and then it'll beep at me, and I will simply close the exhaust to air tight when that time comes, and in 20 minutes, it'll automatically shut itself off, and we will have the makings for cranberry juice. So this is a carry. I thought that maybe I would link a video rose red is a youtube channel none of you have ever mentioned her to me so i'm not sure how many of my viewers actually watch her but she does a lot of reviews on um, kitchen gadgets things like this for food preparation pre pers preser preservation <laughs> that sort of stuff and it's a great educational channel she did reviews on these electric canners and so i'll just link that if you are interested in investing in an electric canner and you're kind of looking for some of the science behind it and whether or not it's a good investment for you or not so check the description box for that all right, this is our cranberry juice out of the pressure canner. I wanted to say is that cut that a little bit short. If you will wait four to six weeks, that is how long the cranberry juice takes to fully give up the fruit to the juice. I do hope you stick around. Some exciting news is happening now in the next clip. How is it seriously always raining on me? I'm walking down the driveway. I want to share with you guys, Aaron has been trying since July um, to do what is finally happening right now. He has made the largest purchase we have made for the homestead that will hopefully make the biggest difference for us outside wise. It'll help us get through winter. It's going to help us actually build a really large, amazing garden area, along with all of the other crazy things we have going on here. So walking down the driveway to meet with him, and I'm gonna show you what he got. Are you excited? Here it comes. Are you ready? <laughs> Okay, we have to make the transaction and then I'm going to show you what it is. What'd you get? Tonka toy. A Tonka toy? Do you want me to look behind you? Huh? You want me to look behind you? No, 
You only have one tail light. Huh? Your right tail. Yeah, you got brake lights, so. though. Okay, it's pouring rain. So tell us, what did you get? Tell the folks at home what's going on. Ah, uh, we just bought a tractor here off of a guy not too far away from us. He's selling, looking for a skidster. We were looking for either one. Um, the tractor we got here, I think it's got the forks, it's got the bucket, it's a ballast, and then it's got a box plate up back around the back with the ripper in it. So we can take care of the driveway, we can use it, we can use the forks like crazy for picking up all the logs. But tractor's gonna help us all around for all the yard work we have to do around here and there's a lot to do. So I think it's gonna, well, I know it's gonna help my back a lot. <laughs> so, uh, yep, pretty excited. Pretty excited, you've been looking for one since July, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so we got a tractor. It'll get some work done around here now that it's winter. We'll be able to use it to move all the snow and keep our driveway accessible. And then next spring, we'll start on all the rest of the yard work that we got to get done. But yeah. Well, there you have it, folks. A huge um, improvement, we will say, to the homestead is being able to have the right equipment that we need for the work that we have planned. And we're, we kept trying to rent and do all that. You even rented while it was gone, right? Yeah. Aaron was even renting equipment while Cody and I were gone this summer, um, just trying to get some things done around here. But there's so much that needs to get done. Um, and we just physically can't move the, the logs and the boulders and all those things. So we need some equipment. So very exciting day on the homestead that we got to share with you guys. So thank you for sticking around. Uh, we really appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed today's video and I look forward to sharing with you all the upcoming projects and everything that we have going on as well. And if you're new around here, would you consider hitting that subscribe button? When you ring the bell, you get notifications. You don't miss anything we have going on. When you give us thumbs up and leave comments, all those things help our channel to grow as well. But welcome, thank you for sticking around and hi to all of those folks who have been with me for a while now. We will talk to you in the next video.